all praise to the most like God. So tonight's topic is called self-improvement. Self-improvement. Okay, let's open up with the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. Let's start there. The book of Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Come on. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, Mm -hmm. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. He says, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. The kingdom of God is the rulership of, of all nations on earth. That's the kingdom of God on earth. Israel ruling on earth, that's the kingdom of heaven. Read again, verse 20. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of, of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. It does not come with observation, meaning it's not going to fall from the sky. Go ahead. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God, he says, is, they're not going to look there and say, Hey, wait, look at the, look, it's right there. Mm -mm. Look, look from, look, look at the east. It's coming from the east. Is coming from the north. No. Or is falling from the sky. It's not going to happen like that. He says, be, be, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. The most High God is given. Give me that in Psalm 68 verse 35. The most High God has given us power to raise up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Watch this. Psalm 68 verse 35. Psalm 68 verse 35. Go ahead. O oh God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. Mm -hmm. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. You see what he's saying? He says, the God, the God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. So the strength and power that the Lord gave unto us. Give me that in Romans 1 verse 16. This is the strength and power that the Lord of heaven and earth gave unto his people, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Read that. Romans 1. Okay. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Go ahead. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Stop right there. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You understand? Go ahead. Hold on. Hmm. Give me that in Ephesians 1.13 real quickly. Ephesians 1 verse 13. It's not part of my notes. So let's just pull it quick. So we can explain the gospel of Christ. Read that. Ephesians 1, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Come on. In whom he also trusted, mm -hmm. after that he heard the word of truth. The what? The gospel. The word of truth. The word of truth, after you've heard the word of truth. Go ahead. After, he heard, after that you he heard the word of truth. Mm -hmm. The gospel of your salvation. The gospel of your salvation. So the gospel of Christ is the word of truth which is what the commandments, the law. Go back to where he was at now. Romans 1, verse 16 again. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Read. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To what? To everyone that believeth. To everyone that applies what is written. It says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because the word for means because it is the, is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. So the gospel of Christ, that's the power for us to rule all nations on earth, to come out on top, you understand, and to stay on top, to remain on top forever, as it was supposed to be from the beginning. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs, okay? Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Proverbs 14, verse 34. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Righteousness exalts the nation, mm -hmm. but sin is a reproach to any people. So what's going to rise us up to, to be above all nations on earth is righteousness. Righteousness exalts the nation. Which nation? God's nation. The 12 tribes of Israel. That's how we are going to be raised up above all nations on this earth. When we get hold of this Bible 
and do what it says and apply. You understand? Yes, we must study. Yes, we must apply. As we apply, we gain wisdom. Wisdom gives you skill. The skill that you acquire, you're going to use that skill to benefit your nation. That's how it's going to be. You understand? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Matthew, okay? Give me Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew 5, verse 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Read. Ye are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Read that again, verse 14. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is hid, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. He says, we are the light of the world. We are the ones that give the, we are the leaders of this earth. We are the light of the world. How? Give me that in Proverbs 6, 23. This is how we are the light of the world. Okay? Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Let's see what this light is. The Lord says, we, the children of Israel, we are the light of the world. We are the leaders of the earth. Read what you got. Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp. Mm -hmm. And the law is light. And the what? And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. And who was the laws of God given to? Give me that in Psalms, okay? Psalms 147 verse 19. Psalms 147 verse 19. We are the light of the world. The light is God's commandments. You understand? And the God's commandments was given to the 12 tribes of Israel. We what you got. Psalms 147 verse 19. Psalms 147. Verse 19. Read. He showed his word unto Jacob. Mm -hmm. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. You see that thing? He showed his word unto Jacob. So we are Jacob. The most that God showed his word. This Bible was given to us. You understand? This is our power right here. This is our power to come out of the conditions we're in. This is the power to come out of the, the dunghill of the earth. This is the power to come out on top and rule all nations and be, the, and, and be the example of God's beauty on earth. And the nations, they know that. That's why it says we are, the light of the, we are the light of the world. The whole earth is not operating now because we are at the bottom. The whole earth is out of work because the 12 tribes of Israel are not ruling this earth right now. Read again, verse 19. Psalms chapter 147, verse 19. Come on. He showed his word unto Jacob, mm -hmm. his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Read. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Come on. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Though, so you see that thing? It says, as he, he says, he hath not dealt so with any nation. No nation was given these laws but us. You understand? He says, as for his judgments, they have not known them. The judgments that we went under, the judgment that was still, ex that was still experiencing this day, no nation has gone through what we've gone through. The Lord is saying, pray. King David says, praise the Lord for that day. Praise the Lord. You understand? Watch this. Now, go back to Proverbs now. Chapter 6, verse 23. Proverbs 6, verse 23 again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. Read. For the commandment is a lamp. Mm -hmm. And the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So the commandment, the commandment of God is a lamp and the law is light. The law is light. So go back to where he was at now. Matthew 5 verse 14. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. Come on. Ye are the lights of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be healed. So he said, we are the light of the world. We are the leaders of the earth. The whole earth was made for us. You understand? We are the leaders of the earth. And we lead the earth with God's commandments. We run the earth with God's laws. So now it says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now you need to take a step back. What do you need in order for a city to be built? What is needed in a city? What do you need to build a city? I'm asking you men. What do you need to build a city? What do you need? 
Brother Zolan, what do you need to build a city? Come on, brothers. What do you need to build a city, Brother Zolan? Come on, sir. Yes. So I would say you'd need a, a solid foundation, like laws that everyone will follow in that city, sir. Mm, okay. Let me hear somebody else. Brother Ndlanta, what do you need to build a city? What does the city have? We need laborers, sir. Okay, we need laborers. What else do we need? Material to build it. Mm, okay, okay. Um, let me hear, Brother Jonah. What do you? What do we need to build a city? Citizens, sir. We need what? Citizens, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, there must be people, obviously. But what do we need? What What does the city have? You need banks, okay? You need hospitals. Infrastructure. You understand? Yeah, but you are not hitting the point. You need banks. You need you need you need uh, hospitals. You understand? You need real estate. Okay. You need doctors. You need nurses. You need teachers. You need engineers. You understand? You need um, you need mechanical engineers, so on and so forth. You need electricians. You need plumbers. You need carpenters. Okay. All of which require skill. And in order for one to acquire skill, training must be administered to the people so that a city can be built. Read that again. Matthew 5, verse 14. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Go ahead. Ye are the light of the world. Mm -hmm. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A city, a city, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We are a city. That's what Christ is teaching us. We are a city, and in a city, you're going to need skills. You need different skills to accomplish the building of a city and to sustain that city that is built. You understand? So, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 1, verse 19. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 1, verse 19. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 19. Read. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding mm -hmm. and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, wisdom reigneth down skill. What is the wisdom? Give me Sirach 19 verse 19. It says, wisdom reigneth down skill. No, Sirach 19 verse 20. Wisdom reigneth down skill. Watch this. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 19 verse 20. The fear mm. of the Lord is all wisdom. You see that thing? The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in, Read. Come and on. in all wisdom is the performance of the law. In all wisdom is the performance of the law. So what is wisdom? The laws of God. Performance of God's commandments will give you wisdom. Application of God's laws will give you wisdom. Go back to where he was at now. Sirach chapter 1 verse 19. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 1, verse 19. Read. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. Mm -hmm. And exalted them to honor that hold her fast. So wisdom, which is performance of God's commandments, when you apply God's laws, you'll receive wisdom. It says then that wisdom is going to give you skill. So the spirit of the Lord will give you skills. It says wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding. You're going to understand the, the things that the Lord is going to open your, your understanding to. You understand? You're going to have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You understand? And the skill set to achieve that thing. In order for you to have skill, guess what you must do? It requires practice. It requires dedication. It requires repetition for you to have that skill. Wisdom will teach you that because wisdom will teach you what? Discipline. You understand? It says, and exalted to honor, to, to honor that hold her fast. You hold the wisdom, the application of God's laws. Guess what, will, guess what the Lord will do? The Lord will exalt you to honor. And as a nation, when we work together, you understand? We move as one. We think as one. The Lord will exalt us as a nation. Not as individuals. As a nation. Because in this society, we are taught to be individuals. 
to be individual light. Me, myself, and I. Mm -mm. All of us. You understand? All of us. That's what the Lord wants. All of us working together, complementing one another to build the nation of Israel because we are at the bottom and we cannot rely on anybody else but us and the Most High. You understand? Read again. Verse 19. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. Now give me Sarak 38 now. Sarak 38 verse 6. Watch this. Ecclesiastes 38 verse 6. Read. And he had given me and he had given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works. You see what the Lord did? Read that again, what the Lord did for, for Israel. Read it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 38, verse 6. And he had given men skill. Mm -hmm. He had that given he might Hold be... on. Wait, he had given men what? He had given men skill. He had given men skill. The Lord has given us skills through his wisdom. That was his wisdom reigneth down skill. He has given men skill. Go ahead. That he might be honored in his marvelous works. That the Lord might be honored in his marvelous works. Because the skills that, that you're going to have is coming from above. The Lord will give you the skills so that he can be honored in his marvelous works through the wisdom that is given unto us to glorify him on earth. That's what it is about. You understand? Go ahead. With such that he healed men. Mm -hmm. And take it away their pains. You see what the Lord did with the, with the skill set that with the skills the Lord gave unto us. Guess what? It says what? It says with such that He heal men. The Lord will give you skills to heal men. He's given us the word to heal our brothers and sisters that are coming into this truth. You understand? It says and take it away their pains because in the world without this truth, you just be going through pain. You don't even know why. Now we know why we're going through the pains. Hence why we are now applying ourselves to get rid of this pain because the Lord has given us a way out. Go ahead. Next verse. Of such that the apothecary make a confession. A that confection. In, an apothecary that goes into perfumes. Okay. Read. Ointments. Come on. And of his works, there is no end. Mm -hmm. And from him is peace over all the earth. You see that thing? From the most high God, there's going to be peace on earth. Understand that? Give me Sarah 14 verse 11. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 14 verse 11. Because in this truth, yes, we must come in and study this book. Because in this book, there's, there's a whole lot of, there's, there's infinite knowledge of the most high God that we're supposed to absorb and apply it. You understand? You see, the Bible is a few. The things that we need to get done, the Bible is a fuel for you to keep pushing. The Bible is your petrol, so to speak. The Bible is your oil that you need. You understand? We need to build a house. Guess what you need? You need skills. The Bible is going to fuel you to continue, to keep pushing. Remember what the mission is about. You understand? Read that. Sarah 14 verse 11. Ecclesiastes 14 verse 11. Read. My son, according to thy ability, do mm -hmm. good to thyself. Read. And give the Lord his due offering. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, my son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. Then he says, and give the Lord his due offering. Watch this. Give me Sarah 33 verse 17. What, is, what, is, when is, what does it mean when he says, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. The most high God doesn't want you to get your mind right. It does, it's not that he doesn't want you to improve yourself, to improve your skills. No, the Lord wants that. You understand? But you need to be able to, to understand that whatever you get yourself involved in, it must benefit you and your nation. You understand? Read that in Sarah 33 verse 17. When it says, according to thy ability, do good to thyself, it go, this is what it's going into. Read that. Sarah 33 verse 17. Come on. Ecclesiastes 33 verse 17. Read. Consider that I labored not for myself only, mm -hmm. but for all them that seek learning. You see that part right there? 
consider that I labor not for myself only. Meaning what? Whatever education that you have, whatever skill set that you want to get, whatever certification that you want to do and all of that, make sure that yes, it's gonna, you are laboring to get that certificate. But also it says, but for all them that seek learning, because who's they, who's they, who are those people that are going to seek learning? Your nation. You understand? So likewise, when you study the scriptures, it's not for you and you only. No, it's for your nation. So guess what? As you study the scriptures, the Lord will give you wisdom because you apply. That application of God's commandments will give you skill. That skill, those skills, is for the benefit of your nation. You understand? Read that again. Verse 17. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 33, verse 17. Read. Consider that I labored not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. But for all them that seek learning. Go back to Sirach now, 14, verse 11 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 14, verse 11. Come on. My son, according to thy ability, do mm -hmm. good to thyself. Read. And give the Lord his due offering. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. And give the Lord his due offering. So now, when you do, when you giving the Lord his due offering, guess what you're going to do? Sirach 35 and 1. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 1. Go ahead. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. Mm -hmm. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. You see that thing? So when you, when you keep God's commandments, you take heed to his commandments, you are offering a peace offering because the Lord is going to give us peace. You understand? And the peace will only be upon this earth when the 12 tribes of Israel take all of this Bible and apply it and rule the earth. That's the only time when there'll be peace on earth. When the 12 tribes of Israel rule this na the nations on earth. You understand? Because we're going to govern the whole earth with God's laws. Understand that? So for you, you, you know, if, if you want to, 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 to improve yourself, which you must improve yourself, you understand? You must look at where, you, where your life is. You understand? And see the things that you must improve about yourselves. What type of education you can go into, what certification you can do to improve your skill set and all that. Most importantly, yes, you are doing that to improve yourself so you can live, uh, so you, you, can, you, 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 know, you can be able to afford certain things. You understand? But when you are doing that, you must keep in mind that your nation must benefit from whatever skill you have, your nation must benefit from it because it's for the building of your nation. You understand? The law says we're a city. In a city, you need, yes, you need citizens, but you need those citizens to have skills so that we can actually build the nation. You understand? And what's going to bring the nation together to be in one mind, one spirit is God's commandments, God's laws. We won't steal from one another. We won't covet each other's stuff. We won't defraud one another. Okay? We know what God's commandment is saying. So guess what? Our job is to stay focused and be rooted in this book. Okay? Read that again. Sirach 14, verse 11. Ecclesiastes 14, verse 11. Read. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and mm -hmm. give the Lord his due offering. And give the Lord his due offering. Guess what? You must apply God's commandments. You understand? Because whatever skill sets that you have or what you want to acquire, always keep your nation in mind. Because when you look at these other nations, right, you look at the Indian, the East Indians, you look at the Chinese, the Japanese, you look at white people, guess what? Whenever they go to college, whenever they go to university, whether to get a diploma or a degree or a certification, it's always to improve their nation. It's never about self. We are the only nation on this earth. When we go into something, it's always about self. It's never about the nation. You understand? The people that be going to universities, getting degrees and PhDs, it's always about self. It's never about improving the, the community. Never. Because I remember during June 16, 
the people that came there with expensive cars, these fancy cars, they just came there just so that they can floss. So they can show their, their, their own people that I'm doing better. I'm no longer living in the, in the ghettos. I'm no longer living and so forth. But they are not doing anything to, to, to build the nation up. They just go there to floss. That's it. You understand? But that's not the mindset we must have in Islam. The mindset we must have as a people is that whatever skill set you acquire, you, it, you must think about your nation. How is this going to benefit my nation? That's the mindset you all must have. Men and women. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Daniel 1, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored and mm -hmm. skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science Great. and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the church of the chaldeans of the chaldeans now let's deal with this uh, read read the verse again verse four i want to dig into this verse read what you got daniel chapter one verse four mm -hmm. children in whom was no blemish stop but right well there. favored it says, children in whom was no blemish, meaning what? There was black and beautiful. They had smooth skin. That means they ate right. You understand? Give me that in Genesis 129. They, they, they had no blemishes on their skin. It says, children in whom there is no blemish, no pimples, no nothing. Genesis 1 verse 29, because they ate correctly. Okay? Read what you got. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. Read. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, mm -hmm. and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Because they understood the dietary law. They knew what to eat and how to eat. You understand? Go back to Daniel now. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. So they understood nutrition. You understand? They understood nutrition and diet. What to eat and how to eat. And when you eat it, what does it do to your body? Read what you got. Daniel 1 verse 4. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Children in whom was no blemish. And you know what? Another thing is that we was in Babylon here. We was in captivity. We was in captivity. Go ahead. But well favored. Mm-hmm. And skillful in all wisdom. You see that part right there? And skillful in all wisdom. They had wisdom. The most that God gave our forefathers, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, because those are foreign names that was given by, by, the, by, by, by the Babylonian eunuchs. You understand? But what I want to show you here is they were skillful in wisdom. Where did they get the skill? Where did they get the skill from? Because they applied God's commandments. Like, that, like we read in Surah 119, wisdom reigned down skill. Yes, they had skill because they applied God's commandments. They performed the laws of God. The Lord gave them wisdom and that wisdom gave them skill. They acquired skills. You understand? Read. And cunning in knowledge. And cunning in knowledge. They had knowledge about deep things. You understand? Including science, including nutrition. You understand? Read. And languages. They spoke different languages. So our forefathers were what? They were educated men. They were not dummies. They were scholars. Go ahead. And cunning in knowledge and understanding science. Stop right there. And understanding science. I'm giving an example. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4. We coming back here to Daniel. And understanding science. Okay. Watch this. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter one. chapter 1 verse 4. Read. One generation passeth away and mm -hmm. another generation cometh. Come on. But the earth. Read verse 4 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4. Come on. One generation passeth away mm -hmm. and another generation cometh. But the earth 
abideth forever. So, you see what our forefathers knew? They knew that the generations of men, they come and go. You understand? So, he's comparing the generations of men to the what? To the generations to what? To the earth. But he's saying the generations come and go, but the earth abides forever. Meaning the earth stands still. In order for them to understand this, they had wisdom. You understand? That wisdom gave them skill. They understood science. They, understand, they understood the science of what? They understood astronomy. They understood that. Esau was still trying to figure it out. But our forefathers knew this thing through wisdom. Okay? It says, but the earth abided forever. But according to Esau schools, in the schools, what do they teach? They teach that the earth is the one that rotates around the sun. That's not what the Bible says. The earth remains still. The earth has been standing still ever since it was created in Genesis. It never moved. It never went nowhere. It's not, it's not even rotating. The earth is not rotating. Next verse. Watch this. The sun also ariseth, mm -hmm. and the sun goeth down, Ray? and hasteth to his place where he arose. You see, you see what now he's telling you, say, listen, the sun is the one that is doing the movements. The sun moves. The sun goes up, the sun goes down, but the earth abides forever. The earth is standing still. It's not moving. You understand? The earth is standing still. Watch this. Give me the book of Job real quick. Okay, give me the book of Job. I just want to prove something. Job 26 verse 7. Job chapter 26 and verse 7. The book of Job chapter 26 verse 7. Go ahead. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place. Mm -hmm, that's and hangeth and hangeth the earth upon nothing. And hangeth the earth upon nothing. When you're hanging some, is it moving? No. You are hanging it. You hang it. It's going to be hanging right there until somebody moves it. It says what? It says, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. The earth is hanging upon nothing. Who's holding the earth that it stands still? The Lord is doing that. The most that God is, is, has told the earth from the day he created it, stand right there. It's been standing ever since. But the white man is teaching our sons and daughters in the schools that the earth is rotating. The, you understand? The earth is never rotated. The earth is being standing still. The sun is the one that's that, the, that does the rotating. You understand? Go back to where it was at. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes on. chapter 1 verse 5. Read. The sun also ariseth, mm -hmm. and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. So the sun goes up, the sun goes down. You understand? The sun rises, the sun sets. So the sun is the one that does the rotation. You understand? The earth is being standing still ever since it was created in Genesis 1. Now jump down to verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7. Mm -hmm. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. So now King Solomon, this is a heavy statement right here that he's making. He says, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. What do they call it? Evaporation and all that. You understand? The sun, the, 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 the oceans, they never overflow until the Lord says, okay, do we see the oceans, the, 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 the oceans, they be, you see the waves and all that. Sometimes the Lord will say, okay, go past the, go, go past the shoreline, go into the cities and just destroy and come back. Sometimes the Lord does that, but a lot of the times it doesn't go beyond the shoreline. You understand? And they never overflow. Why? Because the sun is the, the sun's energy is the one that is causing evaporation on earth and then it goes up and then the clouds form and so on and so forth. That's what Esau teaches in, in, his, in his science. But it's as if he's the one that came up with this. No, he did not. He, they are reading the Bible to come up with this stuff. Now, another understanding of this verse, read verse 7 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7. Mm -hmm. 
All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Mm-hmm. And to the place from whence the rivers come, till that they return again. So what I want to show you here, it says, it says, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. This, what is, the rivers here goes into the nations, the people on earth. The sea, is the, the sea, it goes into what? The earth, because the earth is made mostly of what? Water. You understand? And Esau, what does this Esau teach? Give me that in uh, Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. Then I'm going to break it down. Isaiah 17, verse 12. Watch this. Isaiah 17 and verse 12. Isaiah chapter 17, verse 12. Go ahead. Woe to the multitude of many people, Mm -hmm. which make a noise like the noise of the seas. So it's comparing the people to the seas. Go ahead. And the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. You see that thing? Read on. Verse 13. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters. So now... But God shall rebuke them. Hold on. Wait. So what Isaiah is explaining here is, is the Lord is using a similitude to explain to us that here the oceans and the seas it goes into what the people on the earth. You understand? So in today, when you look at, especially since the corona started and all of that, they've been pushing this concept now. But back in the day, Bill Gates, if you, if you used to watch that show, that um, there's a, it's, it's a website. They've got a lot of videos on it, TED. They call it TED, TED.com. There's a lot of people that go there on TED. They be presenting stuff. You understand or not? One of the videos, Bill Gates went there, he came up with a formula of now to do population control. How to make sure that they, because they were saying there's too many people on the earth. That's not what the Bible says. Read that again, Ecclesiastes, go back to Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7. So him and his father, they came up with this thing of population control, including Kellogg's, this guy of Kellogg's cornflakes. Yes, he was part of the eugenics program to destroy our people. Watch this. Read that. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 7. Mm -hmm. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Stop right there. Hold on. All the rivers run into the sea. That goes into the nation. You understand? The sea goes into the earth. It says, but yet the sea is not full. The earth will never be overpopulated. But that's what Esau teaches. So when you apply God's commandments, this is the type of wisdom you're going to receive. And that skill is going to teach you to do what? Listen, we need to build a city. Okay? And in a city, we need skills. So the reason why I'm honing on this is that our forefathers, they understood science. You understand? They understood science. They understood how the world was put together. Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 17. Okay, start there. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 17. Mm -hmm. For for he had given me certain knowledge of the things that are. Namely, to know how the world was made. Come on. And the operation of the elements. So you see that King Solomon was given that wisdom to know how the world was created and the operation of the elements. He understood the periodic table of elements that Esau claims to, to, he claims that he's the one that discovered. No, no, our forefathers knew this already. They understood the the basic building blocks of how everything was put together. They understood that right down at the molecular level. They understood all of that. You understand? Watch this. Read on. Verse 18. The beginning. So hold on. So now, when he says, and the operation of the elements, he understood physics. You understand? He understood chemistry. He understood astronomy. He understood all of that. Geometry, geography. He understood all of that. You understand? He understood um, metallurgy. How to deal with um, how to deal with with alloys, different type of alloys. That goes into the minerals on earth, metallurgy. Okay, go ahead. 
Wizard of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 18. Read. The beginning, ending, and the mist of the times. Mm -hmm. The alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons. You see what he's saying? He says the alteration of the turning of the sun. Like we read in, in Ecclesiastes 1, when it says the sun goes up, the sun goes down. The alteration of the turning of the sun. So the sun is the one that is doing the motion. You understand? And the change of season. He understood weather. He understood all of that. He knew that, okay, it's going to rain tomorrow. Oh, it's going to rain in an hour. It's going to be cloudy in five minutes. So he understood all of that. You understand? He understood all of that. He understood the weather. Okay? What causes this and when the weather is going to change and why it's changing at this time. He understood all of that. He understood science. Right? The circuits of years mm -hmm. and the positions of stars. Astronomy. He understood all that. Right? The natures of living creatures. The natures of living creatures. He understood the nature of these animals. You understand? He understood it just like Aram understood it. Right? And the furies of wild beasts. Mm -hmm. The violence of winds. And the reasonings of men. Go ahead. The diversities of plants mm -hmm. and the virtues of roots. So he understood the, the winds, meaning the storms. Okay? Why they happen. Okay, and the reasonings of men. He understood the psychology of men. The, di the diversities of plants, what do they call it? Botany, and the virtues of roots, meaning what? The medicines that are involved, the, 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 medicines, medi the medicines that are found in the roots of these plants. He understood all of that. You understand? Herbalist. He understood all of that through wisdom. You understand? But today, the level of wisdom that our forefathers had, we don't have the same type of wisdom. You understand? But the most High God has, has given us the understanding. Say, okay, but you can study for these things. You understand? You can say, you know what? In Israel, we struggle with food. We struggle with nutrition. Brothers and sisters, they've got, it's not, Israel, it's not like Israel don't have money because we are the biggest spenders. So money is not the problem. No, no. Wisdom on how to use these things that's what's lacking. Okay? Knowledge of how to work and operate these things. That's what's lacking. You understand? So guess what? In, the, the, in Israel, one of the biggest problems in Israel is what? Obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. All of which, the list goes on and on. All of which is caused by what? The, one of the main reasons why this, those diseases in Israel is because of what? We don't know how to eat. And we don't know what to eat. Because now is month end. Our people are at the fast food restaurants. They are going McDonald's. They are going Dibonese. They are going KFC and so forth. All of which is what? Application for death. You go there street twice too. You are applying for your death right there. Because they just dip those things in oil, cholesterol, high blood pressure, and so on and so forth. That's how people be dropping dead. You understand? Heart disease. Okay. All because we don't know, we, the, the, we don't apply the dietary law. We don't even know how much to eat when we know the dietary law. You understand? So these are things that as a people, these are the skills that we can acquire. Because we know what the, di we know what the dietary law says. I'm just using diet as an example here. Okay? So it is important to improve yourself. But that improvement must also benefit your nation because you see there's a problem in the nation. We need to, I need to learn this skill right here because I must be an asset to my nation. So this is not just for the men, sisters as well. Learn how to sew, get a skill. We need midwives in Israel. You understand? You see how, how, how you, when you go to hospitals, the doctors, they just run for C-section. Okay? Because they are also using the C-section as a means to do population control because you can only have two or three babies at the most if you have a C-section. That's population control right there. You understand? So these are skills we need in Israel. And that type of a thing requires men to put in work, requires women to put in work to get this work done, to make this work to come about. It's not going to happen with observation. 
That's not going to happen, okay? Now, watch this. Go back to Daniel, okay? Daniel chapter 1. Daniel 1 verse 4 again. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Children in whom was no blemish, mm -hmm. but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So now what you are seeing here says, it says, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace. So Daniel and them, they understood etiquette. You understand? They understood etiquette. They understood, meaning they had such ability that they were able to stand in front of the king. You understand? So you have to really understand the level of, of skills and, and wisdom our forefathers had. To stand in the in the in, in, in front of the kings to be able to advise them on how they must judge matters. You understand? Then it says, whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. So they understood the tongues of the Chaldeans. So they were able to deal with they, they were able to speak with, with multiple languages. You understand? So that's a skill. But you can't just sit and say, I'm just going to open my Bible and I'm just going to read my Bible. Okay, what happens when you close it? You are, none of you are here to become professional students. Let me say that again. You are not here to become a church boy. You understand? You're waiting to stand in a choir and be singing. No. You are here to study and apply what is written in this book. Okay? Because our forefathers did it. You understand? Watch this. Give me... Give me the book of Genesis, okay? You know what? Before you get Genesis, before you get Genesis, give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs 6. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. We're going to read down, okay? Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Because one of the biggest reasons why brothers don't want to improve themselves, this is one of the main reasons right here. Proverbs 6, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. You see what the Lord now is, is going to send us. Says, go, go, because we were we, we so messed up and bugged out, out of our minds, it says, listen, go to the end, okay, thou sluggard. What is a sluggard? A sluggard, give me that, in, let me show you what a sluggard is. Give me Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, okay, chapter 19. Sirach 19, verse 1. This is a sluggard. Read that, Sirach 19, verse 1. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 1. Mm -hmm. A laboring man that is given to drunkenness shall not be rich. Hold on. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. Sirach 22. Sirach 22, verse 1. That's what I want. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. A slothful man is compared... A, a slothful man is a compared... A slothful man. A slothful man is a lazy brother, a lazy sister. A slothful man is what? A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. Stop right there. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. You know what a filthy stone is? A pile of doo-doo. Poop. Okay? A slothful man or woman is compared to a, a piece of SH. That's what the Lord is saying. You see, the Lord don't play. Read it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 22 verse 1. Read. A slothful man is compared to a filthy stone. Read. And everyone will hiss him out of his out to his disgrace. You see what the Lord is saying? Is that and everyone that knows that this brother right here, this sister right here, she is slothful, she is compared to a filthy stone, is as everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. 
because it is disgrace to be slothful. Go ahead. Verse 2. Come on. Verse 2. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Now he's making it plain. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Dudu. Go ahead. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. You see that thing? Meaning what? Everyone that taketh up the slothful man or slothful man, slothful woman, they're gonna shake you off the way they would shake off doodoo in their hands. That's what the Lord is teaching us here, right here. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Mm -hmm. Consider her ways and be wise. You see that thing? Consider her ways and be wise. So the Lord is telling us that, he's teaching us that the end is not slothful. The end is always busy. You just look at ants. They, there's never a dull moment. You know, they even made a movie about it. They made a movie about, I think it's ants or something like that. There's an animated movie about ants. Okay. Bully. A, and what? Ant bully. And bully. Okay. Because those ants, they represent Israel, by the way. So that's what's mockery of Israel is always. But the key is, it says, go to the end, thou sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise. Because the end is wise. So the Lord says, because you don't want to apply my wisdom, go look at the end and get some wisdom. And see how progress gets done. Next verse. Go ahead. Which having no guide, overseer, no ruler. He says, the ants does not have a guide, overseer, or ruler. You understand? Because the Lord is the one that is, the spirit of the Lord is in the end, as it is with every living creature on this, on this earth. Read. Provideth her meat in the summer, mm -hmm. and gathereth her food in the harvest. So the end, in order for, for the end to provide meat in the summer, guess what? He has to, in order to, he, the end will provide meat in the summer and gather the food in the harvest. In order for this to happen, guess what the end must do? The end must labor. The end will labor. And guess what? The end, the way they operate is not like, no, 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 no. Yes, you're not going to tell me what to do. You're going to tell me, listen, that's, that's why it says, go to the end, thou sluggard. You'll never see two ends just sitting there just fighting. No, but why my... Why must you be in the front? No, I want to be in the front. The ants don't do, they work together. They want to cross the bridge. They, they themselves will build a bridge and other ants will move on top of that bridge that other ants have built it so that they can cross and get the work done. Gather the food because they are preparing for what? For winter. That's how we must be. We are a city. In order for that city to be built, we need to think like the way ants move. Because ants are very progressive creatures. They are not slothful. They don't regress. They progress. Go ahead. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Mm -hmm. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? You see what he's saying? How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? So what is he saying? He's saying the ants are moving, getting work done. But you children of Israel, you are sluggard, you are sleeping. You don't want to stand up, you are waiting for the kingdom to fall from heaven. It's not going to come by observation. You have to put in the work. You understand? You can't be hiding behind the scriptures. No. The scriptures is the reason why you're supposed to put some progress. The scriptures is the reason why we're supposed to see progress in your life. You understand? You must be striving to improve yourself because you know this skill set that I'm acquiring is going to benefit Israel. That's the point. Next verse. Go ahead. Yet a little sleep, mm -hmm. a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. You see that thing? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. You just be sitting there just being that filthy slow, filthy stone that nobody wants to touch. You understand? Because you are not going to you're not going to help build. You're going to help, help destroy. Okay, go ahead. So shall thy poverty come as one that, tra that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. 
You see that? You see, the Lord says, you're going to lose the stuff you've got. Poverty will come like, it says, poverty will come as a what? As one that traveleth and, the, and thy want, meaning your lack as an armed man. It was, it's going to be as if somebody just came and robbed everything in your house. That's what the Lord is saying right here. So as a nation, we need to think, we need to think about, yes, I need to study. But once the Bible is closed, that's when now we need to see whether you're going to do what it's saying. You're going to get skills. You're going you're gonna to acquire skills to improve yourself. You understand? Because you know this skill is going to benefit my nation. You understand? That's the point. So that's how all of us must, we, must all, we all must think like that. Whatever, we're not saying don't improve you. The Lord is not saying that. But your improving of yourself, it must be for yourself, for the benefit of yourself, and for the benefit of your nation. Meaning what? It's not about you. That's the point. So you can link this class up with what? That individual. This is the opposite of that. Because the individual, I don't think nation, they think self. Okay. That's the mindset of an individual light. All right? Watch this. Give me, give me the book, give me the book of, um, give me Second Timothy, okay? Let me see. You know what? Before we get there, I still want to deal with this some more. Watch this. Give, go back to Daniel. Go back to Daniel again. Let's go back there. Daniel chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, mm -hmm. and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Now watch this. Because remember, these are our forefathers, Daniel and the, the three brothers. They were skillful in science and cunning in knowledge. They understood the, the languages of the Chaldeans. They, so they were able to deal with the king on that level and to give him counsel. You know what it takes for you to stand before the king? You need to have wisdom. You need to have etiquette. You need to have respect and honor. You need to have a good name for you to, to stand before the king. You understand? Watch this. Give me, go back to Matthew 5, verse 14. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Ye are the lights of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 38, verse 27. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 27. Ecclesiastes 38, verse 27. Mm -hmm. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night that laboreth night and day, and they that cut and grave seals, and are diligent to make great variety, Ray. and give themselves to, to counterfeit imagery, and watch to finish a work. So what you want to see, so Siraj is, is giving out the skill sets, you understand, in or what, what is needed in, in building of a city, okay? You need carpenters, you need workmasters. The work, you know what the workmasters are? Supervisors and managers and all, supervisors and managers, executives and all that, okay? So every carpenter, they deal with carpentry. They're the ones that deal with wood, you understand? Wardrobes and all of that tables, you understand, sofas and all that, chairs and whatnot, racks, all of that, that's carpentry, okay, you need that in a city, you understand, it says, and workmaster, people that will oversee the work that needs to be done, that labor at night and day because they understand that it's not going to fall from the sky, it says that they may cut and grave seals, it says, and, and, and they that cut and grave seals, this goes to, into those brothers that deal with what? They deal with um, engravings. You know, deco de these decorative engravings. Basically, this goes into design, architectures. Okay? Then it says, and are diligent to make great variety. 
You understand? The, these architecture diagrams and all that, and give themselves to counterfeit imagery, and to watch and to and what and watch to finish the and watch to finish a work. Meaning they're gonna see it through. They know that if we don't do it, nobody gonna do it. That's the mindset you must have. If we don't build the city, nobody else is going to do it. Yes, we are in captivity, but in captivity, the Most High God commanded our forefathers to build houses, to plant vineyards. How is that going to happen? You understand? Read verse 28 now. Watch this. The smith also, sitting by the anvil, mm -hmm. and considering the iron work, the vapor of the fire, wasted his flesh, and, and he fighteth with the heat of the furnace. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears. Mm -hmm. And his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He setteth his mind to finish his work and watch it to polish it perfectly. So now the second, the second skills, the, uh, uh, the third skill set here, it goes, is the smith. This is, these are iron men. Brothers that deal with what? Brothers that deal with iron, welding. They, they, they deal with iron, period. Whether it's, 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 it's making, whether it's, 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 uh, it's making doors, whether it's making sliding doors and all of that, whether it's building frames, you understand? Whether it's, it's, it's fitting buildings and all that, they know how to work the iron. You understand? The anvil, because the blacksmith, that's what they would do. They would have an anvil. An anvil is this. Let me show you what an anvil looks like. Okay, because some of us are slow. We don't know what that means. Let's Google it. Google is your friend on this wise. Okay. There. Oh, There's an anvil right there. You see? There, you see that, 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 that's, that piece of iron right there? This, yes, is, this is an, that's an anvil right there. That's an anvil right there. Okay. So this man that is holding the hammer and this piece of iron that is on fire, you understand? Guess what? The anvil was used as an anchor to be able to what? When they were creating archery, when we we're going to war. How do you think we created the swords and all of that? We use an anvil. The blacksmith was responsible for that. You understand? So today it has advanced to, listen, the advancement of this, type, this industry, I mean, today, man, like they'll be using welding machines and all of that, this fancy stuff, you understand, to build anything they want. Houses that are completely built with iron, no stone, iron and glass, you understand? So these are the skills that we need in Israel in order to build a city. Okay, because you'll be watching like these shows, top billing. I don't know if that show still plays this day, but they would show these, these different type of houses and architectures and all that. Guess what? You see a house that is, is just built with iron, you understand, and, and, and glass. That's it. No, there's no stone, nothing. Okay, it requires skill for that thing. That's a skill. So these are things we need to think about in Islam. You understand? You can't just be sitting there, just be reading the scriptures, reading, okay, now we, now we read the scriptures, now what? What are you going to do now, now that you've read the scriptures? The scriptures is a fuel to give you that, to give you that, that, that to give you that fire for you to say, you know what? I have something I need to work on. Let me build this thing because I want to benefit my nation. You understand? Right now, the foundation is set. At the beginning, there was too much at stake, so there was no time to... The, the most important thing was to make sure that we build the foundation. Now the, build, the foundation is set. You understand? So things like now we need to... the certain skills now we need to acquire and all that. We have time, can do that. Okay? I'm going to choose a day out of the week where everybody's going to focus on the skill that they need to acquire in order for them to benefit Israel. I'm working on that. It's coming. Wait for it. Okay. Watch this. Now read verse 29 now. Sarak 38 verse 29. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. So that the potter 
sitting at his work and turning the wheel about his feet, about with his feet, mm -hmm. who is always carefully set at his work and maketh all his work by number. You see what he's saying? This is the porter now, somebody that makes pottery. You understand? So that's a skill. You understand? Somebody that makes pottery. So what you are seeing here, the Lord is giving you different type of skill sets that we need in Israel. And not, not that one brother's skill is not more important than the other. No, they are all work together. Because guess what? Each in, 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 in a nation, in that city, we need different skills. Those skills, they're going to complement each other. That's how we build as a nation. That's how we work together as a nation. That's how we become self-reliant as a nation. You understand? Read. He fashioned the clay with his arm mm -hmm. and bowed down his strength before his feet. Come on. He applied himself to lead it over. And he is diligent to make to make clean the furnace. So now the pottery that is making that is making that's using clay to create all these different uh, designs that he, is, he or she is making. Guess what? All of this is for the benefit of the nation. You understand? Because back then we needed these things to pour it to pour like to pour your rice, to pour the things that we would harvest from the field because we had farms. You understand? So they would create all of these containers in order to pour in what? Flour, sugar, you understand? Mealy meal, okay? Corn, so on and so forth. Beans, seeds, so on and so forth. We use these things. The, 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 the potters that created pottery, they, even, even in the, in the bundus, they still have that. They still have that. To this day, they still do it. Okay? They be using goats. I showed you goats the other day when we were dealing with, we are going over eat to live, the eat to live class. I showed you goats. You see in the bundus, they use the goats, they dry it. Once it's dried, they will be, they take the things outside. They take the things inside, out, inside the goat. Before it dries, they actually dig the stuff inside the goat. They take it out and then it dries, then they're going to use it for what? Some they use it for, for, for beer. Some they use it for water and so on and so forth. Okay, those are skills. All right, come on. All these trust to their hands, mm -hmm. and everyone is wise in his work. And everyone is wise in his work. Remember, go back to Sirach, same chapter, 38 verse 6 again, so we don't lose the thought. Who gives these skills to men? The Lord does that. We what you got? Ecclesiastes chapter 38 verse 6. Read. And he had given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works. You see, the Lord gave men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works. Now go up, jump down to verse 32 now. Watch this. This is the whole point of what we just read. Okay? And this goes in with what we read in Matthew 5 verse 14. Read that. Ecclesiastes 38 verse 32. Come on. Without these cannot a city be inhabited. Stop right there. You see that part right there? It says, without these, meaning without these skill sets, cannot a city be inhabited. Because we need buildings to be erected. You understand? We need buildings to be erected. We need to set, we need to set the water system. We need to set uh, the, electricity, the electricity system. We need to have power in a city. You understand? We need to have uh, water in a city. We need to have these buildings in a city. You understand? Housing, shops, supermarkets. You understand? Hospitals. We need all these skill sets. Electricians and so forth, like I was mentioning. That's why it says, without these cannot a city be inhabited. That, those are the things that we are using today on a day-to-day -day basis that we take for granted. Go ahead. And they shall not dwell where they will. Mm -hmm. No go up and down. You see that thing? So without these skill sets, guess what? A city cannot be inhabited because in order for the inhabitants to be in that city, there must be infrastructure in place. That infrastructure goes into what? The buildings, roads must be constructed, bridges must be built. You understand? Electricity must be installed. You need water. You need, the, you need water. 
You need super, you need food. Okay. So without these skills, a city cannot be built or inhabited for that matter. So I don't want anybody in this camp to have the mindset that I'm just going to sit and study the scriptures. Okay, but the stuff that you are studying, you do know that we have to apply these things, right? We have to apply these things. You can't just be sitting there and say, me, I just want to study. No. No, no. Mm -mm. No. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah, okay? Give me Jeremiah 29, read verse 10. Watch this. Jeremiah 29, verse 10. The Lord is not saying, like we read in Sirach 14, 11, yes, you must study. He says, give the Lord his due offering. Yes, you must. But you must get your skills up. You must improve yourself. You must self-develop. Because you know, you developing, you're going to be able to lead the nation by your example. That's what we need in Israel. Okay? Read that. Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 10. Come on. For thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. So you see what the Lord is speaking? He's speaking through Jeremiah. It says, Thus said the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. Because we, through Jeremiah, Jeremiah he, he prophesied that we are going to be slave, slaves in Babylon under the, 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 the Nilotic Cushites. We are going to be there for, for 70 years. You understand? As slaves. Then after the 70 years are accomplished, we are going to be delivered out of Babylon. Now, Today, we are in new Babylon. We are in, under Babylon the Great. You understand? We don't know how long we are going to be here. We don't know. The Lord didn't specify it, but the Lord gave us clues. The 144,000 must be sealed. We don't know where, what number we at now. So are we just going to sit there and say, me, I just want to read the scriptures? No. Jump up to verse 5. This is what the Lord commanded the nation of Israel. Okay? Read that. Verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 5. Come on. Build ye houses. Oh, and oh wait, 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 wait. Wait, what did he say? Build ye houses. Build ye houses. Build ye houses. In order for you to build a house, what do you need? You need an architect, okay? You need somebody that is going to actually build following the blueprint that the architect has put together. You need the people that know how to build. You need the people that know how to lay the foundation. You need the people that know how what material goes with what. What bricks must you use for this ground? Because the soil here is soft. It requires this type of brick. It requires that type of sand. It requires this type of concrete. You need experts to do that stuff. You understand? You need somebody that knows how to deal with roofing. You need somebody that knows how to deal with electricity, the electrical system, carpentry in the house. It requires different skill sets. So when it says build your houses, how do you think we're going to do that? You just want to do that by just sitting down, just be studying the scriptures? No, you study, yes. First and foremost, because that's where you get your fuel from. Once you get that fuel, you understand your tank is full, guess where you go? You go and get this work done. So this requires, this requires what? We come together, we put our sense together, we get the building up. That's still coming, by the way. So wait for it. Keep going. Verse 6. No, no, verse 5 again. Jeremiah chapter 26, 29, verse 5. Read. Build ye houses and dwell in them, mm -hmm. and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. It says, once you build a house, it says, plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. In order for you to plant gardens, you need, you, you need land. You understand? You need land, okay, and eat the fruit of them. That means you need to understand, you need to understand agriculture. So we need those people that know how to, how to deal with plants. You understand how to deal with plant life, how to plant, how to look after the stuff they've planted, how to harvest, how to take care of that garden. You need those type of because once you harvest, guess where that stuff goes? It goes to the supermarket. Guess where the people want fruits and veggies? Where, where do they go? They go to that supermarket to get those foods. You see, that's how a city is operated. You need those type of things in a city. You understand? Read. 
take your wives and beget sons and daughters mm -hmm. and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. When it says that ye may be increased there, which, where, where? In captivity. Because we was in Babylon. It says that you may be increased there and not, and, and not diminished. So which means we must what? We must build families. You understand? In order for those families to grow, to, to build that city and sustain it, we need skills to do that. I mean, look at our forefathers during the, during the, the 1900s in Sophia town. They didn't have the book. They didn't even know that there was Israel. But they managed to build what? They managed to have, they managed to have uh, hospitals. They managed to have hotels. They had all of that. You understand? Restaurants. They had all of that. And the white man was jealous. He bombed it. D.F. Malan. He bombed it. They dropped bombs on Sophia town. You understand? But what I'm trying to show you is that the Lord is not saying in captivity, you might just sit there and say, ah, oh, but we're in captivity. We're not supposed to be doing nothing. No. That's not what we're reading here. So I'm not saying this is first and foremost. No, first and foremost, give me Jeremiah 28 verse 8. First and foremost, yeah, we must go out and teach. That's the first thing. I'm not knocking that. We're supposed to do that. But over and above that, verse chapter 29 verse 5 down we're supposed to do that as well to prove the bible be true okay I, uh, jeremiah 28 verse 8 read that jeremiah chapter 28 verse 8 go ahead the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence you see that thing? The prophets will teach. So he's not saying don't teach the people. No, we must teach the gospel first and foremost. But now we're in captivity. So are we supposed to now sit and do nothing? No. The next chapter is telling you, build ye houses and dwell in them. So how are we going to do that? We need skills for that to happen. While we're still in captivity. We don't know, when, five, we don't know if Christ is going to return five years from now. We don't know. Yes, we see the signs. But he's saying, he's not saying, then just sit there and just say, I'm not me, I'm waiting for Christ. No. We're supposed to come together, gather the skills that we have, so we can what? We can rely on one another. Right now, for everything, we must go to our, our other, other nations for that. There, yes, of course, there are certain things we're going to have to go to the nations for that. But guess what? We can, what, what, there's nothing stopping us from what? from getting acquiring new skills nothing is stopping you from doing that you understand nothing is stopping you from doing that so that you can benefit your nation and that's how we have to think you understand watch this give me give me the book of genesis okay genesis 41 verse 33 genesis 41 verse 33 let's see our forefather joseph the economist okay read that genesis 41 Verse 33. Genesis chapter 41, verse 33. Read. Now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise mm -hmm. and set him over the land of Egypt. So now Joseph is coming up with a solution on how to solve this problem that Pharaoh had. Go ahead. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land mm -hmm. and take up the fifth part of the land of the land of Egypt in seven plenteous years. Because the, seven, the first seven years, there was going to be plenty. The next seven years, there's going to be famine. There's going to be lack. So he's preparing themselves for the next seven years of plenty. You are going to store up food. Because when the famine hits, the years of, all the seven years of plenty are going to be forgotten. Go ahead. And let, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come. Mm -hmm. And lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh. And let, him, and let them keep food in the cities. Read. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. Read. And the, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 
So now this solution that, 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 that Joseph provided in the spirit of Christ, guess what happened? It was, it, was, it was good in the eyes of Pharaoh because he's like, wait a minute. This is a foolproof solution. We are going to survive if we, when we, if we apply this thing. And that's what, exactly what he did. He followed Joseph, our forefathers' counsel. You understand? Read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such an one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? You see that thing? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Because yet the spirit of wisdom was upon him. He had skill. He saw, this, he saw a problem. The Lord put the spirit upon him to come up with a solution to solve the problem. Guess what? Not only did he do it, he didn't do it for himself, but he did it for his, his fathers, his father and his brothers. Because when the famine hit, when there was famine, um, when the famine hit, this is what happened. Give me that in Genesis 42 verse 1. When the famine hit, his father and his brethren, they was able to benefit. So it wasn't just for him. Okay? Read that. Genesis chapter 42 verse 1. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look upon one, one upon another? Read. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. So now, what I want to show you is that uh, our forefather Jacob, you understand, and the, and, and, the, and the sons, they got to benefit based on what Joseph did. So Joseph was able to calculate to say, listen, you need this amount of food for, for the next seven years. You need to save up this amount of food in your warehouses. You understand? Because that's today's terms now. In your warehouses, so that when the famine hits, you will be able to survive for the rest of the famine. You're not going to have lack. His, forefather, his father and his brothers, they benefited from that. Because there was famine in Canaan. When they go to Egypt, there was plenty because of what Joseph did. You understand? He was able to foresee. So you, it, requ it takes skill for that to happen. And he, he acquired that skill through the wisdom of the Most High, application of the laws of God. You understand? So these are examples that our forefathers left behind so that we, are, we don't have no excuses today. You understand? That our forefathers, they left these examples for us so that we have no excuses. So we don't have excuses. You understand? Watch this. Give me... Give me the book of Titus. Okay, give me Titus 2, verse 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 2. You know what? Mm, before we get that, give me the book of Exodus, okay? Give me Exodus real quick, because I mentioned it, but I never really touched on it. Give me Exodus chapter 1, okay? Give me Exodus 1, verse 15. We're going to read down. Because I mentioned that you know, these skill sets of midwives and all, we need midwives in Israel. You understand? Read that. Exodus 1 verse 15. Exodus chapter 1 verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, and the name of the other Pua. So we have our foremother, Shifra and Pua. They were midwives. Okay, read. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then he shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. So now what Pharaoh was doing was Pharaoh commanded the Hebrew midwives, our foremothers, to kill the, the boys if, the, if our foremothers were giving birth to boys. But if it's the girls, he says, keep them alive. Because right here, they were starting the feminist movement right here. You understand? Eradication of the black man and raising and uplifting the black woman above her man. Go ahead. But the midwives feared God mm -hmm. and, did not, and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. But they saved the men children alive because Shifra and Pua, our foremothers, they understood that the man is the one that continues, the, that carries the seed. 
They are the ones that make sure that the nation multiplies. You understand? This was not the beginning of the feminist movement, but it was the continuation of it. Because the feminist movement started in the garden with Adam and Eve. When the serpent came to deceive Eve, that was the beginning of the feminist movement. Here, Pharaoh is just continuing the same garbage that the serpent did in the garden. Okay, go ahead. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing and have saved the men children alive? Mm -hmm. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Because back then, there was no such thing where you have to push the baby. No, gravity will pull the baby down. That's why they set upon stools and the, gravity, the force of gravity will pull the baby outside of them. So in order for you to understand that, what do you need? You need science. You see, our foremothers were not dummies. Shout out to the sisters. Our foremothers were not dummies. Okay? They had skills. That's why they were able to help Israel, to be an asset to the nation of Israel. So whatever skills, whatever education you want to go into, listen, make sure that you're going to benefit your nation. It mustn't just about you and you getting paid and your nation is not benefiting from you spending all those years at varsity and all that. Then your nation must benefit. Okay, watch this. Um... Okay, that's it on that. I just wanted to just pull that out because I did make mention of it. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book. Mm, let me see where I want to go first. Give me Sirach 38 verse 1. Ecclesiasticus. I have not forgotten Titus 2. Sirach 38 verse 1. Let's start there. Ecclesiasticus 38 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which he which ye may have of him, for the Lord hath created him. So now you see what it says, honor a physician with the honor due unto him, for the uses which ye may have you may have of him, for the Lord hath created him. So today the physicians that the, the physicians that exist now is not of our people. You understand? Now we have to go. To the, to the other nations for medication and all of these things, for treatment, for if you have a problem and illness, we go to these physicians of the other nations and all that. So, but guess what? Does it mean that we can't do it? No, it don't mean that. We can do it. You understand? It doesn't mean we can't do this. We can, and we will do it. One thing I can tell you, brothers and sisters, is that Israel is going to grow. Understand that. Israel is going to grow. The Lord has prophesied in the Bible that one third of Israel, they are going to repent and come back into this Bible and apply what is written. That's millions and millions of people. Israel is going to grow. This camp is going to grow. You understand? And guess what? These are the type of skills that we need. We need doctors. We need lawyers. You understand? We need carpenters. We need... We need iron men. You understand? We need architects. We need teachers. We need engineers. We need people that know how to deal with, uh, with children. We need people that know how to deal with clothing, how to make clothes. We need all of that. Perfumes, soaps. All of that is necessary for the building of the nation. My point is this. What I'm going over is we need these things in order for us to survive in captivity. And guess what? We can do this for ourselves. We need people that know how to deal, how to, how to deal with farming, agriculture, because we need that. So we keep the commandments, keeping the commandments. Guess what? As you study, you see things, or wait a minute, our forefathers did this. So why can't we? You see that? Okay, read on. Verse 2, come on. For the Most High, for, for of the Most High cometh healing. Read. And he shall receive honor of the king. For of the Most High cometh healing, because healing comes from the Lord. Read. 
the skill of the physician shall lift up his head mm-hmm. and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration because the physician will in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration because of the skill that the lord has given unto him to heal the people you understand so we use the bible to heal our people of the illnesses they got you've got issues with your hormonal imbalance the lord has given us a dietary law what to eat to reset your metabolism so your hormones are in che- are in order they are not out of whack so on and so forth these things we when we study the scriptures that's how we get our people to repent and our people get healed just for, just from applying what is written okay now watch this give me give me the book of tyrus okay no you know what before tyrus Give me the book. You know what? Yeah, go back to Titus. Go to Titus. Let me start there. Titus chapter 2 verse 2. Titus 2 verse 2. The book of Titus chapter 2 verse 2. Go ahead. That the aged men may be sober. Grave. No, no. Read that right. Read that right. Come on. Titus chapter 2 verse 2. Go ahead. That the aged men be sober. Mm-hmm. Grave, temperate, sound in faith in charity in patience so now this is the requirement for the aged men is that the aged men must be sober meaning sober minded grave they must be serious temperate sound in faith in charity in patience now I, i'm showing i'm going to show you an example because we must lead our people by example give me judith 824 real quick judith chapter 8 verse 24 judith 8 verse 24 Judith chapter 8 verse 24. Mm-hmm. Now therefore O brethren let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend on us and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. So now we are saying the responsibility of building the nation is put upon us and the nations are going to look to us as we are setting the example of how things needs to get done so what you are seeing here is that is as let now let us show an example to our brethren because our people need to see an example of what this bible is really saying we must be that example of what this bible says so our people can what our people can change their thinking and say you know what i want to be like that brother something is different about that brother i want to be like that sister something is different about that sister what is she doing right guess what they they ask you questions this is where you send them the scriptures you understand so it says because their hearts depend on us that we have a, we have a whole we, are, we have millions of people relying on us to get our minds right to act right to apply what is written so they can see by our example that this bible is true and the sanctuary you understand the teachings of the scriptures and the house the house of Israel and the altar the scriptures the temple which is what our temple rest upon us so we must set that example watch this i'm going to show you our forefather give me second maccabees 6 verse 17 this is our forefather eliezer okay second maccabees chapter 6 verse 17 let's start there because at this point antiochus or antiochus because that sometimes they call him that He was forcing our forefathers to eat pork, to eat swine's flesh. But I want to show you that really how grave and temperate our forefathers was when it comes to this Bible. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 17. Watch this. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 17. Go ahead. But let this that we have spoken be for a warning unto us. Mhm. And now will I come to the declaring of the matter in a few words. So now Eliezer is going to explain to them what's going to go down because they were li- they literally forced him. They open they forced open his mouth to put pig flesh in his mouth. Okay, read. Eliezer, one of the principal scribes, an aged man. A what? And what an aged man. an aged man the aged man that we read about in Titus 2 verse 
that the aged man must be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith. Okay, go ahead. An aged man and of a well-favored countenance was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. You see, you see, it says, it says, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. So meaning they force open his mouth to put a flesh or pork meat in his mouth. Go ahead. But he, choosing rather to die gloriously. Choosing, whoa, to, whoa, 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 hold on. Choosing rather to what? Choosing rather to die gloriously. He says, I would rather die gloriously than to eat this thing. I'm trying to show you really how our forefathers, you see when he says the aged man must be sober, grave, temperate, you must, they must be serious. Our forefathers were serious. They didn't play games. He says, I would rather die gloriously than to eat this thing. Go ahead. Choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. You see what he did? He says he spit it out. Because they forced it inside in, in his mouth, he spit the thing out. You understand? He rather, listen, I'd rather suffer the torment that you're going to torment me with than to eat this thing. Go ahead. As it, as it behoved them to come, that are, res, that are resolute to stand out against such things, as are not lawful for love of life to be tasted. You see, you see it's, it's not lawful for love of life to be tasted. So when you, t when you eat pork, you don't love life. You hate life. And you hate yourself. Give me that in Leviticus 11 verse 7. Okay? This is the law. That's how our forefathers didn't play when it came to this Bible. You understand? Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the swine... Though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. Mm -hmm. He is unclean to you. So swine is unclean to us. Go ahead. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So the Lord is commanding us that don't touch this thing. Don't touch pork. He's unclean to you. He's an abomination unto you. Our forefathers understood this law. They understood the dietary law. Let's go back. Second Maccabees 6. Second Maccabees 6 and verse 21. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 21. Read. But they that had the charge of that wicked of that wicked feast. The wicked feast, the wicked feast is the feast of Barkas that we read about in verse 7 up. Because they were they were celebrating their birthdays. They are also were forcing us to celebrate their birthdays. They were forcing us to celebrate uh, the Feast of Bacchus, which is Bacchanal. Today in the, in the Caribbean, they call it Labor Day Parade, where black men, black women will be parading the streets, you understand, having sex with one another. So after, after Labor Day Parade, which happens every year, the following year, men will be having kids that are not theirs. Okay, it's a thing. Now, keep going. For the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision. You see Such what the thing it says? Hold on. So Eliezer's old acquaintances, because they were in agreement with the customs of the Greeks, because they were Hellenizing us. So Eliezer was refusing to say, I'm not going to be Hellenized. But there were those of our forefathers of our people that agreed to the Greekish fashion and they partook in their wicked sacrifices. So now they are Eliezer, our forefathers, these aged men, they are his old acquaintances. Now they, are, they, are, they, are, they, 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 they took him to the side. Now they want to talk to him on the side, say, listen, you, you, know, you, you know, like um, you don't have to be so, you don't have to be so serious about this. That's the point. That was the mindset. Listen what he does. Read verse 21 again. First Maccabees, second Maccabees, chapter 6, verse 21. Read. But they that had the charge of that wicked feast, 
for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision. You see what they was doing? They 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 took him aside. They said, "Listen, we're gonna we're gonna give you food. We're gonna give you flesh, meaning meat. It doesn't have to be pork. You can choose the meat that you want to eat, but we're gonna make it seem like it's pork, and you're gonna eat that. But you and I both know it's not pork." So he thought about this thing. Hmm. Keep going. First Maccabees chapter six verse twenty-one. Come on. But they that had the charge of that wicked beast, for the old acquaintance they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, mm -hmm. such as was lawful for him to use, right. and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. You see what they were doing? They say, just make it look like you are doing it, even though you are not. But just make it look like you are doing so we can what? So they because they knew that if he made it look like he was eating it, even though it was maybe let's say goat or fish or pork, I'm not pork, but lamb or beef and all that. But the people looking at him, guess what? They are going to be destroyed mentally. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in um, I think it's Ephesians. Or is it Thessalonians? Where's the scripture at when it says abstain from all appearance? What scripture is that? Yes, first Thessalonians. Thessalonians. Yeah, first Thessalonians 5, verse 22. Read that thing for me. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22. Go ahead. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You see that part right there? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Even if you look evil. The appearance of it, if it's appearing, if it says abstain from it. So our forefather Eliezer understood the plot that they was doing here. Because they were saying to him, listen, you must just eat, even though it's the food lawful to eat, but we're going to make it seem like to the people that you are eating pork. But in reality, you are not. But he was not focusing on that. He was focusing on how it's going to look. Go back to 2 Maccabees now. 6 verse 22. Second Maccabees chapter 6, verse 22. Go ahead. That in so doing, he might be delivered from death. Mm -hmm. And for the old friendship with them, with them find favor. So now they were saying, do it for the old, old, old friendship that we had. That's what it says, old acquaintances. Go ahead. But he began to consider discreetly. And as, and as became his age, and the excellency of his ancient years, mm -hmm. and the honor of his gray head, whereunto he was come, and the most honest education from a child, mm -hmm. or rather the holy law made and given by God. Therefore he answered accordingly, and willed them straightways to send him to the grave. You see that thing? He thought, that, he thought about this stuff. He said, listen, this thing is going to put a stain on my name. He says the excellency of his ancient years. So all these years, because remember, we're going to read about so we see how old he was. You understand? And he's being in the truth. The point is, it says, whereunto he was come and his most honest education from a child. Education. Or rather the holy law made and given by God. The scriptures with us. Therefore he answered accordingly and willed them straightways to send him to the grave. He says, listen, after he thought about all of this, and you can put me to death there than to put a stain on my name. Go ahead. For it becometh not our age, said he, Read. And in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eliezer, being fourscore years old and ten, were now gone to, straight, to a strange religion. You see what he's saying? It says, he, because it says, but the young man that is coming after him, it says what? It says, whereby many young persons might think that Eliezer, being four score years old and ten, he was 90 years old, were now gone to a strange religion. He says, what are the people going to think? The hell is this? Next verse. Go ahead. 
and so and so they through mind hypocrisy and desire to live a little time and a moment longer should be deceived by me mm-hmm. and i get a stain to my old age and make it abominable you see he was thinking about what his reputation and what he's going to do if he does this go ahead for though for the present time i should be delivered from the punishment of men mm-hmm. yet i should not escape the hand of the almighty neither alive nor dead now that's a heavy thing right there it says listen it says for though for the present time i should be delivered from the punishment of men because antioch and his men were going to punish him which they did he says yet should i not escape the hand of the almighty neither alive or dead meaning what you can't escape the most high's judgment alive or dead mm. remember what we read in revelation 1 he says i am what let's read it so i don't butcher it heavy stuff revelation chapter 1 let's see if i can still see it because my bible now is just gone revelation chapter 1 read verse 18 Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 Go ahead I am he that liveth mm-hmm. and was dead Come and on. behold I am alive forevermore amen mm-hmm. and have the keys of hell and of death You see that thing he says I have the keys of hell and of death So when are you are alive or dead you still going to get the judgment Yo we don't know the type of power we dealing with here Woo heavy stuff Now but our forefather Eliezer what he's showing us here that's why it says that the aged men be sober. So this is a precept that you can use to give an example of what our for an aged man our forefather that what he did in order for to do what to stand fast to stand firm for the laws of God. Okay? Go back to 2 Maccabees 6. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 29. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 29. No no, read verse verse 27. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 27. Go ahead. Before now, manfully changing this life, I will show myself such an one as my age requires. He says in this life I'm going to show myself such an one as my age. I mean I'm going to act my age. Go ahead. and leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws mm. and and when he had said these words immediately he went to the torment you see what he's saying he says i want to leave a notable because it's noted now we can read about it a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws that's why it says who will stand up for me for, for who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity our forefather he did that thing you understand read on verse 29 verse 9 mm-hmm. they that led him changing the good will they bear him a little before into hatred because the four said speeches proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind they said they thought he was he was being desperate keep going watch this but when he was ready to die with stripes mm. he groaned and said it is manifest unto the lord that that hath the holy knowledge that had the holy knowledge that whereas i might have been delivered from death I now endure so pains in body by being beaten but in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him now our forefathers was heavy the spirit of our forefathers was rolling in listen listen keep going watch this and thus this man died mm-hmm. leaving his death for an example of no of a noble courage and the memorial of virtue not only unto young men but to all his nation but unto all his nation not only to the young men but unto all his nation let's go back to tyrus now tyrus 2 verse 2 again tyrus 
Titus chapter 2 verse 2. Read. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, mm-hmm. in patience. Jump down to verse 6 now. Watch this. Hold on. Wait, wait, this... wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, give me Sarah 44 verse 1. Sarah 44 verse 1. Because our forefathers, they left great many examples for us to follow. You understand? They left great many examples for us to apply, not to make excuses this day. Okay, Sarah 44 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 44 verse 1. Mm-hmm. Let us now praise famous men and our fathers that beget us. Let us praise these famous men. Elias, our forefather, was one of them. He was a famous man. It says, and our fathers that beget us. Read. The Lord hath wrought great glory by them through his great power from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Come on. Such as did bear rule in their kingdoms. Men renowned for their power, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. He says, giving counsel by their understanding and declaring prophecies. Go ahead. Leaders of the people by their councils. Mm -hmm. You see that part right there? Leaders of the people by their councils. Not leaders of the people by their emotions. No. Councils. Go ahead. And by their knowledge, and by their knowledge of learning, meets for the people. Meaning good for the people. Good for the people. By their knowledge of learning, good for the people. Read on. Wise and eloquent in their instructions. Why is it eloquent in their instruction? Because we will instruct you out of God's laws. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6. Mm-hmm. Rich men furnished with ability. Furnished with what? Le- furnished with ability. He says rich men furnished with ability. They were rich in spirit. You understand? Because they had what? They had wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Not only that, they had actual riches our forefathers, in captivity. You understand? It says, rich man furnished with ability. Go ahead. Living peaceably in their habitations. Living peaceably in their habitation. Remember, it says, without these cannot a city be inhabited. So how did they live peaceably? Because they built houses and they dwelt in those houses. And they took care of those houses. They sustained them. They protected their family and took care of their families. You understand? Read. All these were honored in their generations. Mm -hmm. And were the glory of their times. And they were the glory of their times. Like we read in 2 Maccabees 6 verse 17 now. Go ahead. They be of them that have left a name behind them. Mm -hmm. That their praises might be reported. That their praises might be reported. That's why he left a notable example for us this day. Jump down to verse 15. Come on. Verse 15. The people will tell of their wisdom. Mm. And the congregation will show forth their praise. That's what we are doing this day. Okay, Sarah 14 verse 11 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 14 verse 11. Mm -hmm. My son... According to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. So now what we read in Sarah uh, 44 verse 6, it says, Rich men furnished with ability, living peaceably in their habitations. That's why he says, read that verse again, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 14 verse 11. Mm-hmm. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself and give the Lord his due offering. You see what he says, according to thy ability, because that ability, the Lord is the one that is going to give you the ability to accomplish these things. You understand? If you put in the work, if you're not slothful, you learn the wisdom from the end and be wise. Watch this. Give me 2 Timothy 3 verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 17. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 17. Mm-hmm. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Read that again. Second Timothy chapter three verse seventeen. 
that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So the man of God must be what? Must be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. That goes into what? The work that we must do in the body and the skills we must acquire for the benefit of the nation of Israel. Whether it's learning how to edit video, whether it's learning how to make music, whether it's learning how to do animation, whether it's learning how to, to sew, you are learning how to make shoes, you're learning how to make perfume, you know, all of that. Those, those skill sets, they are needed for the building of the nation of Israel. You understand? Watch this. Give me that entire, go back to Titus now. Titus 2 verse 6 now. Titus 2 verse 6. Titus chapter 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Young men likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. So meaning likewise, like we read our forefather Eliezer, it says young men likewise, likewise, just like the aged men, you must also exhort yourself to be sober-minded. Okay, go ahead. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Mm. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness. Gravity, sincerity. Seriousness and you must be sincere in this truth. In all things, whether it's you improving yourself, getting a certification in something, you understand? Getting a degree, a diploma, whatever. Whatever skill set you must, you, you, whatever skill set you must, you want to have, he says, in all things. This is not just study. No, application. In all things, he says, what? Showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Next verse. Go ahead. Sound speech that cannot be condemned. Mm -hmm. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Having no evil thing to say of you. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 44, 16 now. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 16. Ecclesiastes 44, verse 16. Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated, being an example of repentance to all generations. So our forefather Enoch, he didn't die. The Lord took him because of he was, he was, he, listen, the, one of the most righteous men that ever set foot on this earth, Enoch was one of them. He says he pleased the Lord and was translated being an example of repentance to all generations from his time unto this day. He was an example of repentance. Watch this. Give me that in Philippians. Philippians 3 verse 17. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17. Read. Brethren, be followers, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? It says, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them, meaning point them out which walk so as ye have us for an example. He says, those men that follow our footsteps you must encourage them to do this, to continue doing that. They must follow our footsteps. That's what he's saying right there. That's a commandment. That's how we build a nation. That's how you're going to be able to improve yourself. Because when you look at the examples that we, we went over of our forefathers, our forefathers, they kept the commandments of the Mosai, but they also understood another thing that today it seems to be like a foreign concept that we still have to survive in captivity. For that to happen, we need skills to sustain ourselves, to take care of our families, to bathe, to be able to eat, to clothe, to have a roof over our heads, to sustain ourselves, to open businesses and all of that, to support one another, to work with one another. Our forefathers, they did the scripture, they, they applied the scriptures, and they did all of those things I just mentioned. And today, we have it more easy than it's ever been before, than our forefathers ever had. Our forefathers didn't have all these access to social medias, access to online education. They never had none of this stuff. We do. You understand? But we are doing worse than them. Unbelievable. We need to change that thing. We need to change that thing quickly. It's urgent. This is an urgent situation. That's why this class is being brought out. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms. 
Okay, Psalms 119, verse 59. Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. Go ahead. I thought on my ways mm -hmm. and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. That's what we must do. That's what every man and woman must do up in here. Go ahead. I made haste mm -hmm. and delayed not to keep thy commandments. You see that part? I made haste and delayed not. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. That's the same, that's the same mindset we must have. We must make haste. We mustn't delay. We must make haste to keep God's commandments. We, might, we must make haste to create a sustainable environment for ourselves in the lands of our captivity. Because that's, our for, that's what our forefathers did. Yes, the Lord is coming back, but we don't know when. Is he, he, does it mean he's not coming? No, of course he's coming. Don't get it twisted. So, but in captivity, we must sustain ourselves. You understand? For that to happen... We need skills. Okay? We need skills. So those programs are coming. In the next coming weeks, there's going to be a lot of changes that are going to happen. You understand? Because we need to be able to get things done. Okay? Because there are, I'm seeing a lot of gaps. Those gaps need to be filled and quickly. Okay? In order for us to be able to build the, the infrastructure. So when our people come in, that multitude that's coming, they're going to be able to find where they can be able to be of, they can be able to use the skills that they have already to contribute to the building up of the nation of Israel. You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. Okay. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had sub saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and, and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high for that. All praise to the most high.